Come on, guidance? We don't need guidance. Let's see, difficult, very realistic. Yep, dry rail. And God, I forgot how gorgeous this thing is. Look at that. Smoke box is just... Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a beautiful locomotive, too. Well modeled and extremely pretty. 1800s locomotive design was just something else. What's up, guys? This is Heist. Today we're playing Train Simulator Classic. There's a man with a beard over there. <laughs> and we are playing with the Union Pacific 119 smoke boxes, Old West models. I can't remember what the pack's called. We've got a little passenger train. We're playing the scenario 19 miles to Cheyenne here on the 1860s version of Cheyenne. And uh, we're going to do the thing here. And uh, I remember that these are really complicated and well simulated. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to mess something up, but I think that's going to be fun. So here we go. <laughs> All right. Let's get her going. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> the particle effects are great. God, this thing's got canned up cylinders. Rogers, man. There it is. Hey, look, he spells tricot correctly. Oh, man, you can see the drivers spinning through the, uh, through the floor there. I may have accidentally set up the air because the, uh, or not the air, the brakes, because the brakes are set by the, uh, whistle, actually. So you're communicating with your brakeman. Come on, sweetheart. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely the brakes that were set up. Bring the bar back. Got her open wide. That's pretty good right there. Takes a second to trail off. Oh god, that's awesome. I forgot how good the sim is. Smokebox is really what makes Train Simulator Classic fun to play. His stuff is just really accurate. I guess we want some route information here, see what the heck we're doing. We can go 10 miles an hour through this switch, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is like the sharpest passing track thing I've ever seen. Anyway. Just get out on the main here. <laughs> this coach just looked very silly going through that. And the switch wasn't lined, but it is now, so that's fine. I'm gonna be going downhill. I'm not sure how we modulate how much they apply the brakes, but I guess we'll find out. How's our pressure? 120? That looks fine. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this is the, the one thing that I don't enjoy about this sim. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Johnson bar likes to slam if you touch it. I'm trying to hook it up, so I press S. And, uh, oh, well, it's okay now. There we go, but there's certain spots where it just dumps itself in the corner. Which they do try to do, but you... You, hold, you hang on to the big red part with one hand and you unclasp it with the other and you can bump it up or a notch or two at a time pretty easily, so. Let's get this thing going. Percent and a half downhill. We got places to be. Come on. We're not even at track speed yet. This thing's beautiful. And we can see the fire. And there's a way to change the, uh, there we go how much fire you have, and we don't need much. Desired fire mass, leave the door open, and I guess the automatic fireman will make the scoops happen, which is an interesting way to do it. Let's confirm that that's happening with the uh, thing here. Fire mass is still going down. And the tender coal level is 
was slowly going down. Okay, that's fine. And we're at pretty much track speed now. Percent and a half. And now we just we just let it run. The proportions on it feel so weird to me because I'm so used to the narrow gauge stuff. But goodness, it's pretty. I like it all the scroll work. All this stuff. That's one thing that I love about what Armagon does in all of his historical research is just getting all of the different Baldwin styles correct. Obviously, this isn't a Baldwin, but getting those little details. There's <laughs> a dude with a musket on the, on the sand dome. That's awesome. Okay, I'm not sure. Do we? Can we see handbrakes in here? No, but we can modulate them from that menu. But we're going down a percent and a half, and it, we're just we're just cooking here. So. Oh, are you just shoveling now? Oh, okay. No, auto auto fireman's on. He's doing the thing. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Look at the crazy cast. Oh. Look at the crazy ornate hoops for the uh, for the ding ding. That's very fun. Cooking along, 30 mile an hour. This is, um, I'm sure this is an ap accurate uh, representation of Wyoming in the 1860s because it looks just like Wyoming today where there's nothing except dirt. <laughs> well, that's cool, and you can see the, the fire coming out when he uh, opens the door. Well, I don't mind us breaking the speed limit a little bit. It's not like anyone's watching, it's not like anyone knows. We could count our, our telegraph poles, right? And the passengers could do it, but they, they don't know what's going on. It's fine. Oh, but we get minus points. I guess that guy's watching. Come on, it's tangent track. We got places to be. Oh, wow. The the, the swaying around's pretty good, though. Let's have a camp, different cab views. Left side, farm in view, overall. Let's see what the tricocks do. Uh, you wouldn't open it that far, actually. You got steam. You got water. Water, so we got two gauges of water. We don't even have a sight glass in this thing. That's fun. We've just got the, uh, the tricocks, which evoked quite the conversation on the latest Steam 101 video. I was kind of surprised at how many opinions there were out there about those. Feed water here. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. Feed water valve, oh, okay. Oh, this has got a crosshead pump, doesn't it? Yeah. That's how we put more water in. I suppose we should probably be concerned about that, shouldn't we, at some point? Now that we're speeding at a good rate here. Shut the throttle back. We are using zero steam, which is kind of hilarious. And what is the water level doing? We have 600 or 1665 gallons. I'm not sure if the uh, the fireman has an injector, let alone if he's using it. Let's see. He does have an injector down here, ornate brass thing. So he can put in water that way. And we have plenty of uh, water for now, and we're just cooking along downhill nice and easy, so. Nice and easy at five mile an hour, an hour over the speed limit. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, and the Stevenson motion's in there, and it's animated and everything. You could see the uh, the eccentrics doing the dance in there. I wonder if uh, if it's animated throughout the stroke. Knowing Smokebox, it probably is. Yes. You can see that bar raising and lowering there. So I'm going into the forward, all the way forward in the corner there, dunk, and the motion's down. And then as I come up, the lifting arms pick up and we pick up the whole motion and raise it. And it's in reverse. That's really cool. <laughs> now that we're 
done raking that back and forth. Come on, we got we got places to be. I hope you got a good fire in there, bud. Because we're, we're going to use it. Does not appear that he does. And we're not accelerating terribly fast. I wonder if there's still brakes on the cars. I'm not entirely certain how you understand how set up the brakes are. <laughs> Get these wheels spinning nice. This curve's only slightly spicy looking. I guess we'll shut off, let him try and catch up with his fire. And I guess we can help him by popping the door open and getting all sorts of stuff. We want maximum fire, all of the fire. Please make it happen, sir. We're not even getting spicy sounds going. We gotta get this thing going. Coming up to a passing loop, the water tower. Make sure the switches are set. Okay, well, I mean, it's more fun to just impale the train towards it with reckless abandon, but I mean, I guess we can go and check the switches. We'll just leave the cab, fly along the railroad here. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> Got nothing to do, huh? You're standing out here? Let's see. Lined straight. Yeah, good heavens. They didn't care about passing tracks being anything back in the day, apparently. Lined and lined, so long as Ding Dong over here doesn't throw the switch for us. Leave it straight. We haven't flown off in the meantime, have we? I can hear it. Let's, let's watch it run by from Ding Dong's perspective here. Oh, that audio is awesome. The reverb added in there was great. I guess Ding Dong might have something to say about us flying past at presumably 40, 50 miles an hour. <laughs> 43, that's fine. Oh man, these speeding points are really adding up here. Whoever wins has the highest negative score, right? Oh, and we've killed our boiler pressure. Come on, man, keep up. Get out of the seat and shovel. What are you even doing? I guess we can shut off and let you try and catch up here. Are you putting water in? No, he's not putting water in, so I guess we will open up the feed water heater, open up the feed water valve. And theoretically, we will now be pumping water in, I think. I'm not sure what other steps you have to take to get, uh, get that working. Is there a water valve on the tender to open? There is. Okay. Oh man, that looks just like the uh, the rear grand ones that I'm used to, actually. That's cool. These are um, they're stepped with the. There's actually only one notch at the top on ours, but you pick the valve up, and then it, it rests in that. It looks exactly like what we have in our tank legs. And then we have the cute little coal scoop. You would hate yourself if this was the amount of coal you had. <laughs> it's like nothing left. Come on run back forever to go get some more. And let's see. Do you have a blower or something? Injector. Oh man, they're all little hoops down there. That's fun. That's probably blower, if I had to guess. Does not seem to do anything. I'm not sure what that is. Is that the blower? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's got a starting valve up here that you've got to turn on. That's fun. Yeah. Get the fire ripping. We have places to be, and I would like to be going fast. I would like this number to get increasingly smaller. Because, you know, more negative, right? Keep shoveling. Still got two gauges of water. That's not that pronounced in real life. And you only like crack them open. You never open these all the way. And then they would be that pronounced presumably, but quite obnoxious if you do let them go that far. So 
But now our crosshead pump, we can see the boiler water level is increasing. Our crosshead pump is working here. This is the crosshead pump. It's a mechanical pump driven off of the actual crosshead of the locomotive itself. So as this cycles, it mechanically pumps more water into the boiler through that check valve right there. It's very ornate. <laughs> it's kind of a neat system, but uh, yeah, they they all really were only around on the early engines. Oh man, we're getting a lot of negative points. It's fine. We're only going 10 over. Come on, man. All right. Let's see about killing that boiler pressure that we've managed to get here, because I want speed. Speed and power. It's really no... Like, we need more... We need more steams. The pressure's not coming up that quick. Is there... Oh, they're presumably dampers. Okay. And they don't seem to affect the steam generation rate. Interesting. That's all right. And what are all these handles down here in front of the fireman? Injector steam, injector water, and the feed water valve. Oh, is there a crosshead pump on this side too? Oh, there is. Well, that's cool. Dual crosshead pumps and an injector. They were ready to dump water into this thing, apparently. That's neat. Oh, one fun detail that you can see here is that the safety valves are just driven mechanically. And so there's actually weights in the cab here uh, that aren't modeled. Or no, hang on, there they are. Not in the same spot um, as the whistle linkage was. It's hard to see how dark it is up there. These weights actually counterbalance the safety valve. And it's just a... Uh, this is calibrated to lift, you know, the steam pressures enough to overcome these weights only at a certain time based on that leverage, which is a neat mechanical version of early safeties. Also, good heavens, that dome is nice and shiny, isn't it? <laughs> Giant brass steam dome. For a percent and a half grade downhill, we're really not cooking that fast. And it seems very challenging to get more steams shut the throttle off. Let's see, if I work a little steam, maybe, maybe we can increase harder with a little bit of draft. Get the uh, reverser nice and tight. One neat thing that Smokebox did with these as well is um, he set the the um, the notches in the Johnson bar and the throttle, actually. And hang on, speaking of, we're getting a lot of... Uh, boiler water going in. We're over one. Yeah, we have three gauges of water now. So we'll close that off. But yeah, it's, it's really neat that the, the individual notches are actually modeled. You can see that we're at 23%. I just tap W and I can only go 23, 29. Because it's an actual little notch, which is pretty cool. In the Johnson bar, I mean, there really are just those notches you get, and that's it. On the throttle, with the way the linkage is set up, you can get more or less than the individual notches discreetly with the slop and the pins. But I imagine that would be an, a very challenging thing to modulate without VR, so. Very cool. Getting a little bit of black smoke, despite having the blower raging and working a little bit of steam here. The pressure is trying to come up. What else do we have over here? The feed water heater. Okay, same thing on the, as on that side. There's no turret on this engine. It's all just plumbed directly in the boiler, which is a little silly. And it's not even plumbed out of the steam dome, which is also interesting. And there's your steam throttle for your, the injector, which presumably is just the starting valve you just leave open all the time. All the injectors I've operated have those, and you just leave them wide open, basically, and shut them at the end of the day. There's no reason to modulate it otherwise.
This is really just not getting fast. <laughs> Oh, we're generating a fair amount of steam, though, now. It's almost keeping up. And for some throttle settings, some steam chest pressure settings, you can move the Johnson bar without any issue, which is neat. They do tend to try and fling you out the, uh, the cab door on these slide valve engines. But you can definitely do it with two hands, no, no issue. I mean, it's it's not quite as dramatized as this thing when it goes tunk. But it's a neat bit of sim. It's fun to see that actually simulated. My train brake is listed at 98% apply. I'm not sure if that means it's actually applied or not. Oh, there's the cylinder cocks are up there. It's a rotational thing? That's bizarre. How does that work? Okay, the linkage runs through right there. Comes down to a bracket up there. Where does it go from there? I'm not sure where it goes from there. It's hard to see. Presumably to... Oh, hang on. Oh, no, that's not the cylinder cocks at all. That is... What is that? That's this guy right here. Which is the... F oh, that's for the feed water. Okay, that makes sense. That's the linkage to run the feed water. And then the cylinder cock linkages run through the handrail? That's hilarious. So as you open or close the cylinder cocks with this lever... Does it rotate the whole handrail, or is it just a pipe within the handrail? Then there's this cam and arm off of it that you then ultimately modulate for all this. How many levers did they need for these cylinder cocks? That's absurd. Or is it just like a quick push-pull on the, uh, the more modern steam locomotives? You just push-pull it, and it's like one lever that runs past the front. I wonder if it's animated. Okay, it's down, and the valves are forward. And now it's up, and the valves are back. Smoke box, you genius. That's a neat little detail that I've, I've not appreciated before on this. And it's so fun to have someone who makes these mods that catches all of those little things. Like, that's, that's a detail that I don't know if I've ever paid attention to or thought about on this engine before. But there it is, and... He simulated it, which is just fantastic. I mean, that's that's the stuff I love about Smokebox's add-ons and train sim. It's just so cool. All the little details. Yeah, that's... that's I'm properly, uh, properly enthused by that. That's really neat. And well, we got safety chains, too. From our drawbar there. Although they look like they're a bit floating away from the tender, which I'm sure is just a product of train sim doing shenanigans. But yeah, if your draw bar breaks, you also have safety chains on a lot of locomotives to make sure that you keep the tender with you. Alright, are we still managing to make- oh, nope, 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 sweetheart. Come on, can I have that? Can I have that? Thank you. <laughs> Fire door opens up. Go get him, bud. Do these change when there's drafts? No, I don't know if the dampers do much, or maybe they don't do anything because uh, I think I have some semblance of the automatic fireman still on. I gotta see how many uh, minus points I have. Is there a passenger car view? Oh, there is. That's cool. Is that in the... That must be in this car, which I'm not sure what it is. 187 is just a baggage car. Oh, and there's all sorts of views for it. That's fun. Oh. Huh. And the, 
<laughs> There's a coal stove just smack in the center of it. That's kind of interesting. Okay, we got it wide open here. Another passing loop. Check the switches. All right. Yes, boss. We'll go do it. <laughs> Not sure how you do it on the fly. We're lined. Nope. We would like to be lined this way. Who left it lined for the passing track? That's not per timetable instructions. There's another man. He looks like he's about to tell someone something. He's a little confused and a little frozen. <laughs> That's fun. Okay. And yeah, we were both lined for the passing track here. So we'll take care of that. Presumably our train is still on the rails back here somewhere. No, we haven't killed it yet. Okay. Five miles. So we, we were 19 miles west. We got to get uh, into Cheyenne, I think, and that'll be that. Just banging along on the old railroad here. This is cool. This is This is the view right here. Does the blower even matter right now? Can we shut it off? It's annoying to listen to. Let's see if I can click on it. Doesn't seem to be having an effect at the moment based on the uh, fact that we're drafting with steam so hard. There we go. Look at how cool this is. The, the sway, the bob, the engine's doing. It's a little bit like seasick cam, but it's still so cool. Just got the throttle wide open. Can we get a can we get a notch out of it? Come on. One more. One more. Ooh, valve vents were starting to sound a little weird. I'm not sure what that was. Presumably that's something that uh, has simulated. I wonder if it's back pressure. Too much back pressure because of the speed that we're going. How are we still slowing down with the throttle wide open? <laughs> On this straight tangent track that's downhill. We're just about on center. Most of them would have gone lame by now, but we'll just leave it there because we're only at 60 PSI. Just half of operating spec, I think. 120. These board-on tube pressure gauges tend to only operate uh, with any amount of accuracy in the middle of their reading. They tend to be off on the high end and the low end, so typically that's why you see the uh, operating pressure being at the top center of the gauge. Not always, but many times. Oh, this is pretty. Oh my god, there's striping on the pilot? I didn't even realize that. All this line work. <laughs> it didn't leave anything, apparently. I don't know if we have enough boiler pressure for it to want to throw the bar around. No. Although the chuffs go away when we're on center, which mm, possibly could be how the locomotive is set up. But Stevenson valve gear, which is what this is down here, actually is set up in such a way that you can have variable lap and lead, which is how much the valve kind of preempts what the cylinder is going to do. And so typically you can be set up so that they will still run on center. So you'll still get chuffs. They'll be very light, but you'd still get them. But I don't know if that's how this locomotive was set up back in the day. And a lot of locomotives, as soon as they wear a little bit and there's enough slop in the pins and the linkages and die blocks and everything, um, that becomes physically impossible for them to do pretty quick. If 
I call for another, uh, everyone release the brakes because we're trying to go fast here. No change. Let's see. Can we release it? Loco brake? No? Train brake? No, they're both. I don't think that does. Yeah, the UI doesn't do anything. Let's see if we grab this guy. Train brake, loco brake, both at zero. <laughs> Why are we slowing down so much? The plane bearings aren't that resistive. Percent grade downhill. If I shut off, will we roll faster? Are we just cushioning the pistons? Decent um, sound sim as well. I'm really picky about that sort of stuff, and it, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good with the individual valve events and things doing what they're doing with the particle effects. It's it's pretty solid. Train brake still says 98% apply. Am I missing something on how these brakes work? Tip of the handle initiates a long whistle, okay? Come on, brakeman, do your thing. Let me go fast. It's fun that he made all of those things uh, modulated by the whistle. Oh, those are different whistles being recorded, or different microphones or something. You gotta live with what uh, recordings you have, of course, though. Huh. Oh, the, uh, yep, those work. <laughs> we, we, we've killed the speed. <laughs> Giving a little toot, and then it immediately parks the bus. Come on, sweetheart. So it really just doesn't roll that well. That's honestly shocking. I don't know. Maybe the uh, maybe the brasses are just that bad. Maybe it's not lubricated. It certainly is challenging to keep the boiler pressure somewhat am amount of sane on this thing. at the Cheyenne Depot. Come on. What is it? Two miles out? We can press F6. I can see here. Nine, we can see. Two miles west is there. One miles west. And then, and then we show up at Cheyenne itself, which is just nothing. Roundhouse. And then that's hilarious. And a Y. Fun. Come on, I want to get there. That is cool that the, uh, the valve events are different based on bar position. They sound good. It doesn't sound machine gunny like a lot of model trains do where it's repeating the same samples of noise over and over. Really can't believe that it just does not want to roll though. 0.9% grade, and it's just like, no, gotta have the throttle wide the heck open. Shut it off. And we're slowing down. I mean, it's like a brick. <laughs> 
Well, I think I'm gonna have to call it here. I know we're so close, but it's gonna take so long to get to Cheyenne and we've kind of gotten the boiler pressure so low that we're not gonna make it really. Um, I'm sure we would make it eventually, limp it into town, but I suppose this is a good time to announce that uh, I'm not at my computer right now. By the time you're watching this, right now I'm actually in Carson City, Nevada at the Great Western Steam Up. Hopefully I've met some of you guys by now. Uh, it's going to be a fun event. Obviously I'm recording this prior, but I'm going to go get on an airplane pretty quick here and i got to wrap this thing up and slap it on YouTube for you guys, so... Um, planning to release on Saturday, so you're watching this a couple days in the future, and hopefully I've got some awesome footage from yesterday to share with you guys pretty quick here, but um, that's going to be it for me as, as we slowly drift to a stop on a percent grade downhill. I'm not sure what that's about. Yeah. Can we uncouple just the tender? Well, that's a vibe. Come on. And it immediately dies. <laughs> Choo Choo's like, this does not compute. I don't have my tender. Yeah, the steam, the steam chest pressure is refusing to increase now. That's kind of hilarious. I've broken the sim. I broke the Choo Choo. It's not supposed to be able to happen. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know if there's any scenarios or other things you'd like to see with these engines. I know there's also the Central Pacific engine, which would be great to play around with. So, yeah, let me know if you guys like the video. Type comments below. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here. Click the bell if you... There's a valve event. <laughs> and all of the smoke in the world's come out. Finally got the fire mask going. We definitely broke it. Anyways, uh, click the bell <laughs> if you want to know when I'm uploading stuff. And, uh, God, this is hilarious. I don't know what it's doing. Anyways, as always, huge thank you to the ESD train crew who have joined the channel as members and they support the channel monetarily. I really, really appreciate that. Genuinely, it's, uh, it's kind of awesome that there's folks out there that want to do that. And you guys get some pretty cool perks along the way as well. So thank you to all those individuals. And if you're interested in joining, you want the live stream perks, the extra uh, emojis and all that sort of fun stuff. There's a link down below. So thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.